My name is Liz Kidder, and I'm a dreadlock artist. Okay guys, I am really excited about today's video. This is something I feel super passionate about. So we are going to dive into all of the different techniques that you could use to start dreadlocks. So if you want to start your dreadlock journey and you're not really sure how to go about it yet, this is the video for you. All of the different techniques have their pros and cons. I'm a big believer that there's not a right way to start dreadlocks. There's just many different ways. And so I think it's important to understand all the different methods and that way you can figure out which one is going to work best for you. So I'm going to try to tell you a little bit about each method, pros and cons, and I'm going to try to do a demonstration. This is just kind of funny because I personally use the crochet hook method. That is the only method that I use. I specialize in it. So of all the other methods, like I know about them, I understand them, but I just don't practice them. So some of them I've never even tried before, um, but I am going to try to do a little demonstration of each one for you today. So it should be interesting. Now before I jump in I just want to kind of put out a disclaimer. So when I'm talking about different methods I may mention that some methods are better or worse for different hair textures. When I do that I'm going to say textured hair or straight hair. There are a ton of different hair textures within those categories so what I mean for all intents and purposes is textured hair I'm talking about extremely kinky curly tight afro textured hair straight hair I am talking about straight hair but I'm also talking about just like looser curl patterns waves etc pretty much all of these the techniques could be used on either but just some are gonna work better or worse. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> so the first technique, the OG original technique that we're gonna talk about is freeform or neglect method. So think Bob Marley. Freeform method is when you literally just stop brushing your hair and let it naturally turn into dreadlocks. So you would continue to wash it, you just wouldn't condition it or brush it anymore. And then over time they will turn into dreadlocks. This could take a very long time. And this is where hair texture does play a huge role. So some textures are going to do it quicker or better, meaning more uniform, I guess, than others. Doesn't really matter what texture your hair is, all hair will lock. I will say that the finer your hair is, like the actual strands of hair being thinner, smaller, locks a little bit easier compared to like coarse thick strands like think Asian hair, that doesn't lock as easily. But if you stop brushing, eventually your hair will lock up. Another thing that's important to mention about freeform is that once the hair starts to knot up, some people will continue to separate like groupings or sections that are knotting up. This will allow you to have maybe more dreadlocks, thinner dreadlocks, more uniform maybe dreadlocks compared to if you don't separate them, you may have huge sections that all just turn into giant mats together. I mean, you could even have one giant mat on your whole head. So I think most people that go freeform still do separate their hair, but that's also up to you. Pros of this method would be that you're doing it for free, you're not paying anybody, nobody's helping you, you don't even really have to do anything yourself. So it's the easiest method, I guess. <laughs> Cons of this method is just that it can take a really long time and that you have absolutely zero control over how they turn out as far as like the shape, size, stuff like that. I can't really show you a demonstration of this method obviously because you're not doing anything to create it, but I'm pretty sure you guys get the idea. The second method that we're going to talk about is twisting techniques. So within the category of twisting, there's also some different variations of that. There's like comb coil twists, two, trans, two strand twists, retwisting when you're like maintaining them. This isn't really my wheelhouse, but here's an example of comb twists, comb coils, where you would use a comb and you're doing this on wet or damp hair and using product. And you're taking the comb and twisting it around to literally just create like a little coil. 
So obviously if you've got a curl pattern, this is going to hold a little bit better in your hair compared to straight hair, or there's nothing really for it to hold on to and it can just fall out easily. Guys, this is my first time ever trying this on a mannequin, so please don't come at me if I'm not doing it exactly right. I'm just trying to show you an example. If you have helpful tips for people that you wanna leave in the comments, if somebody decides this is a good method for them, go for it. <laughs> And then that's gonna bring us into two strand twists. So two strand twists also I believe done on wet hair with product and basically a rope braid if you know what that is. So you're splitting the section into two, kind of twisting each individual section one way and then twisting them together the opposite way. So you're creating like a rope shape. Again, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to show you an example so you can put a visual to what I'm saying. I think both of these methods you would actually use like those little tiny metal clips to clip them so that they like dry in a little bit of a tighter shape. <laughs> Okay, so twisting techniques, like I said, are gonna work better on textured hair that has more of a curl pattern. It's just gonna hold better. The pros to twisting techniques are they are pretty fast. I was gonna say it requires less skill, but obviously it does require skill because I didn't do a very good job there. But faster, less skill, which means it's going to cost less if you were to go have it done somewhere. It also looks really clean and sharp on day one, like smooth and sleek compared to some of the other techniques. But then the downside is that once you wash this and the product rinses out, no matter your hair texture, there's gonna be some level of that lock falling back out and needing to be redone every few weeks, months, so often, whatever it is. So the time that it's going to take for the dreadlocks to really form, lock, mature, is still gonna take a long time. The amount of time, again, is gonna depend on your hair texture, how often you're washing, stuff like that. Another downside to twisting techniques, I think, is the use of product. So there are other techniques that allow you to create dreadlocks without using any product at all, so you don't have to worry about products getting like built up and trapped and stuck inside of your hair. Compared to twisting techniques, I think you're pretty much always using some type of gel or pomade or wax, you should never use wax, but usually a gel. And so doing that repetitively over and over and over combined with washing your hair less is more room for product buildup and other issues to be happening. The next method we'll talk about is backcombing. So just strictly backcombing. So this was actually originally how I started my dreadlocks before I had ever learned about the crochet method. So with backcombing, you're just going to take the section of hair dry take a comb and literally comb it backwards to create those knots and tangles. You wanna do a lot of passes coming down the section to really create like a solid foundation under there that's going to like stay put and speed through that maturing process a little bit faster. Backcombing is still going to take a long time to mature. You're just kind of helping the early stages of creating those knots and tangles. Sometimes after you backcomb, if you're just using that method, you could end it off with like a little palm roll, which might like make it appear slightly less crazy. <laughs> The pros to backcombing are, again, that it's another easy technique, which means it's gonna be quicker to do or cheaper to do if you go to a salon. Unlike freeform, you have control over your sectioning, same with twisting techniques, I don't think I said that. So you do have some level of control of like how big or small you want the dreadlocks, how uniform you want them. The downsides though, they are really messy to start and they are really big to start. It's like a giant rat's nest and everything is just like sticking up everywhere. They're really fluffy and it takes a while for them to start to mat down. But yeah, that's backcombing. Next up is twist and rip. So twist and rip is another like common at home technique that a lot of people with straighter hair types use. It's supposed to be easy, but as I'm trying this on a mannequin and have never done it before, I probably should have watched a video because it's not as easy as I thought it was. But basically you're taking the section, twisting it on dry hair, and then splitting it at the bottom and pulling the two pieces outward from each other to create knots in the hair and then twisting it again pulling twisting pulling 
Hence, twist and rip is the method. This technique, uh, again, is very easy to do at home and do yourself or with a friend. You don't necessarily have to go to a salon and pay a professional to do this. But I will say with my experience with my clients who you know, had started their dreads with Trish and Rip and later ended up coming to see me. It varies a lot, like what they look like on day one, depending on how the technique is done. I mean, I guess you could say that about any technique. Um, and then over time, same thing. They just, I feel like there's not a lot of control over what they do. And the way certain people do it, like more twisting, less knotting, it ends up looking kind of loopy as they start to mature. So I feel like they go through more of a process of looking a little rougher in the beginning before they get better. I'm not really a huge fan of twist and rip, although I did say I wasn't going to be biased in this. <laughs> they all have their place. I swear that is what I believe. Every technique has its place. Um, I just, yeah, I'm not comfortable with this method, but a lot of people do it and have success with it, whatever you deem as success. <laughs> Next, let's talk about interlocking. This one I feel like is a controversial one. Um, interlocking is where you take the bottom of the dread and and loop it through towards the root of the dread, creating like a topsy tail. This is a method that can be used for starting dreadlocks or maintaining dreadlocks. <sighs> Let's be careful of how I say this. <laughs> and it's controversial because there are different ways of doing it. So first of all, you don't want to always be looping through in the same hole because then you're just going to create two separate twists. You want to be switching directions every time you come through so that there's no hole in the dread. But even still, if done really tightly, I believe that this kind of prevents the hair from naturally shifting and locking up the way it wants to. I used to interlock my hair a little bit and I did have some little holes that looked, it almost looks like, because it's like twisted on either side, it almost looks like a little um, fishtail braid. And so in theory, I think the downside is that if you have these holes and gaps in there, those essentially become weak spots down the road. But on the other hand, a lot of people use this method and have success with it. I think that it works better on textured hair for some reason and really thin dreadlocks. I don't think that this method is good for thicker locks. So if you're familiar with those really teeny, teeny, teeny sister locks, I think that's some type of interlock method that's used to create and maintain those. Another thing that I want to say about this is that it's commonly confused with crochet hooking. When you're interlocking, most people are using a latch hook. It has that little latch that opens and closes. So when you're interlocking, especially as you get close to the root and it's really tight, you can poke through the root area with your latch hook. Oh my god, I just got it stuck in my hair, didn't I? <laughs> so it would be open when you come through the root, and then you hook the end in there, and then as you pull back through, the latch closes, and you pull it out. So this is a latch hook, and this is the tool that is used for interlocking. You could use a crochet hook, but most people use a latch hook. Crochet hooks, or crochet needles, as some people call it, these don't have a latch at all. So these are just a little teeny tiny hook at the top without a latch. And so this is going to be for the next technique that we're going to be talking about is crochet hooking. The problem is some people that do interlocking call this tool a crochet hook. And so clients get confused and think that somewhere does crochet hooking and then they go and they're actually getting interlocking done. So, this is a latch hook used for interlocking. These are crochet hooks or crochet needles. I don't like that word. Crochet hooks, because there is a hook at the end, used for crochet hooking. <sighs> are we clear? <laughs> okay, and the last technique that we're gonna talk about, I swore I wasn't gonna be biased in this video, but 
Crochet hooking is the technique that I use and love and I believe it works great on all hair textures and some people call it instant locks because you're getting like well, the closest <laughs> version of a dreadlock on day one. It's still gonna take time to fully mature, lock, mat, whatever, but you're kind of like already through a lot of that process by doing um, instant locks or crochet hooking. So this is where we're using the little teeny hook you can either back comb first or twist and rip first like you want some sort of a base in there or with afro textured hair you almost don't even really need to back comb or do anything because it's already kind of there and then you're just using the hook and weaving in and out and around to kind of like cinch it all together there's different techniques of using a crochet hook within that category, so people use it different ways. I always say every way is right as long as you're not breaking hair. So, the pros to crochet hooking. Like I said, you're getting instant dreadlocks. They do still take time to mature, but you're further along through that process than any other method, in my opinion. No products necessary or anything like that. The downside. <laughs> It is the most time consuming method, I think, and requires like the most skill. Ooh, I'm gonna get in trouble for saying that. I do believe that though. Um, it is a certain skill level required and it takes a lot of time and practice and so it's going to cost a lot more to have somebody do this for you. It's kind of difficult to do on your own, not to say that it's impossible, but it takes some experience to be able to create a full head of dreadlocks with a crochet hook successfully. <laughs> You just need to be really gentle using a crochet hook um, and not be like too aggressive or forceful with it because you don't want to break hair, like I said. And once again, I believe that this works on all hair types. And I'm not going to get into maintenance today, but as far as like at, when they're forming, I do believe that the crochet hook is the most effective tool for fixing and manipulating things and making them look exactly how you want to compared to other techniques you don't have as much control over those things so that's it we're gonna wrap up this video i hope that even though my demonstrations weren't perfect i know i know i hope that still gave you something to work with that you understand each of those techniques a little bit better whether you're a client looking to get dreadlocks, I think it's important, like I said, to know about the different ones so that you can pick the one that's right for you. And if you're a dreadlock artist, even if you're like me and you just do one thing, I think it's good to understand the other techniques too, so that when you're talking to clients, you can educate and compare things and explain the difference between things. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all the things. This is a new channel for me. I have lots of stuff planned, so I hope to see you back here. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.